In this episode of Finno-Ugric Machining, we are going to talk about uh, my catch from the Filia market. Uh, we are going uh, to clean up and condition a micrometer. Uh, then uh, mm, we are going to talk about uh, bearing ball tolerances. <clears throat> I got a few of them. So, and finally, we are going to talk about, uh, uh, and uh, I will show you uh, in there is a camera there, there. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how I do these videos. This, I think, is seldomly seen um, in uh, this type of videos. Okay, so. Let's go on uh, with my uh, uh, flea market findings first. The weather couldn't be any better. Sun was shining, no wind, uh, temperature uh, about 20 degrees. Uh, well, I suppose it's quite normal for this uh, time of year. It's early spring. Um, well, um, in the flea market there were some attractions like drill bits, uh, some uh, steel, hmm, and something to fill up your stomach. Uh, it was really, really beautiful. And there was even a demonstration. Okay, so here is our first victim, the micrometer. So, uh, oh, let me set the autofocus on in this time. Yeah, now it's on. So, um, this micrometer, uh, well, I bought it today from uh, Flea Market and it uh, looks to be in a very good condition actually. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, one that is branded Hahn et Kolb Stuttgart. It's very nice, it's very robust, uh, indestructible, um, one could say. And uh, well, <laughs> I already opened it and already lost uh, one piece from it. Uh, you see, there is this uh, ratcheting mechanism. It's no more ratcheting. Uh, there, there was a spring which I lost. Oh, so where to get a suitable spring what that, for that one? Well, I figured it out. You can use these springs. Uh, you can find them in. Oh, this out of focus is out of focus. So you can find these uh, little springs in, well, uh, you can find them in cigarette lighters. And uh, well, <laughs> I found out uh, that you can find uh, uh, different sizes from them. Uh, and uh, well, actually only one of these is suitable and that's the small one. So. Now let's see what's inside a micrometer. This one opens uh, from here from the back. You just have the screw here. You open up this screw when it now opens up. And uh, I have to tell this, uh, so this particular micrometer is uh, really, really nicely done. Uh, I suppose all the parts are hardened. This is the ratcheting. Uh, it has some dents on that one. And then inside here, as you can see, a very small part fell out. Oi, it's magnetic. Fell out. And there was a spring. There is a hole under which there is a spring. And then you can take out this one. This is a <coughs> cover 
it has uh, no other functionality. It's uh, just a cover. It covers uh, these two things, which are backside of the micrometer. There, that one, where my finger is pointing, and another there. These are to adjust this thimble, I believe. So you can take it fully out if you want to. So let's let's want. So this is uh, something that you don't need to take apart. So if your micrometer is uh, a little bit tacky, and if it is uh, like uh, having uh, trouble, it's yeah tacky. So you should probably clean it up. Okay. Once you get this part out, so there is a very fine thread inside there. In this case it is because every rotation is uh, uh, 0 0.5 millimeters, so there are two threads for every millimeter. Then <clears throat> there is this uh, thing which you can use to uh, tighten the threads inside uh, this, uh, this one. This one I don't want to take out. You probably would do it if you clean up your micrometer. I already cleaned this up. So you um, might want to take this out. It's the break. And uh, in this case, it's uh, not uh, very easy to put back. So I don't want to do this again. <laughs> so uh, this is how it looks. So when you put it back, just be very careful. Don't force it back in. Now, yeah, there you go. So that's uh, the inside of a micrometer. It's, it's really very simple. Uh, machine <laughs> and uh, in this case this is really robust it's uh, made to last your life and uh, I'm probably going to use this one back home when I'm uh, there because this is so it feels nice it's uh, really really compact and uh, I, I don't know how to tell this but it's uh, <sighs> It's not older than me, but uh, very near to that. Okay. There is one thing I need to do with this one. When you put it, put uh, uh, these things together, it doesn't go entirely to zero. It is uh, showing one hundredth of a millimeter difference. And this one you adjust uh, here back. And you need a special tool to do that. Okay. And uh, I probably need to make one. The tool, I mean. And then I can adjust it. And, uh, well, it's a nice touch to have a cover for that one. Usually you have here somewhere uh, slots where you use a, a wrench uh, to rotate this one. But this one is a little bit different. <coughs> okay. So now the ratcheting mechanism. So let's see. I have to put. Oh, hopefully I don't lose this one too. So uh, I think we need to cut it somewhere. Well, I'm using nail uh, cutters for this one. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did I lose the? <laughs> I lost the spring right away. No, there it is. These are really easy to lose. So, now, let's uh, put it there back again. Uh, I don't know how long should it be, but I assume you have to leave some room uh, for the, uh, for the um, ratcheting pin. So let's take it, cut it first from there. That was easy enough. Okay. 
then we just put the new spring into there uh, I wish I could see better I cannot oh that was a horrible sound okay uh, this is really horrific ah. Uh, you really need to res wrestle this. Oh, there you go. I lost it. <laughs> okay, let's take a new one. I noticed it should be a little bit longer, actually. Okay. <sighs> Hopefully I don't lose this pin, because this one uh, cannot be found in cigarette lighters. Uh, no. So as you can see, this isn't easy. I probably would need to have uh, uh, pliers, very small ones. No, no, it was quite near. Now, please go there, please. Doesn't want to go into the hole. There is a very, very small hole in the side of this thimble. Yes, it's there. Now I need to... Well, I'm using my Swiss Army knife <laughs> to adjust this. Okay. Now, where is it? Oh... This thing is really springy. Oh, you, yeah. Ah, <sighs> if you lose that, you are you are really lost. And now, not again. Did I lose the spring again? Well, uh. After a fight, I finally got it uh, right. Uh, this was horrible. I needed to use a match, which I sharpened, and uh, then I could uh, put the spring on there, and then guide the spring in. The correct length was really, really, really critical. Uh, if it was too long, it didn't work at all. If it was too short, <laughs> then it was too short. Um, okay. Um, but now it has a really nice sound in it. And it works exactly as it should. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I'm satisfied with this one. Okay. So that was my first find in the Flea Market and a very good one. Hahn et Kolb Stuttgart. The next find <laughs> was a little bit amazing. Uh, I didn't believe my eyes when I saw it. Well, oh, here it is. Oh, here they are. Well, all 5,000 of them. <laughs> These are 5 millimeter bearing balls. Well, the price was so affordable that I took them. Uh, I don't know whether I have any use for them, but uh, time will tell. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the mean thing with this uh, is that now I needed to search for the um, bearing ball uh, designation, nomenclature. Okay, what I found out is, first of all, this is a very known, well-known uh, German manufacturer of uh, bearing balls. And then in the backside here we have First of all, the amount 
5,000. Uh, the package was unopened, so all 5,000 there. I don't know if the if it is exactly 5,000. Okay. Ko U5. Uh, this is uh, the internal designation of this company, but it means that it's a 5 millimeter nominal ball. This G500. Uh, well, my first thought was, ah, nice, because this is the tolerance. Uh, well, the bigger the number, the worse the tolerance. These balls are next to crap. <laughs> well, I have bought myself 5,000 uh, uh, bearing balls, which are not very suitable for bearing. But they are probably, because they are stainless steel, they are stainless steel and they are suitably sized. I might have some projects in the future when I could make some use for those. The last number here, yeah, uh, I already said uh, stainless. Uh, this is uh, the material. It's stainless, but uh, not hardened. And uh, not very good stainless, it's magnetic. Yeah. I already proved that one, and uh, yeah, uh, so here you go, 5,000 bearing balls. Oh, okay, uh, next thing is this. Everybody who knows uh, German uh, manufacturer uh, Röhm knows that they make really good quality uh, drill sucks and this one is a little bit uh, this is intended for a boring machine uh, just a handheld thing but uh, uh, I probably can make an adapter for my milling machine for smaller bores this is uh, ranging from one millimeter which is quite small up to can I read it yes uh, 13 millimeters and uh, it's really smooth, it's a keyless chuck, and uh, I assume it uh, works just great. Okay, that's one. This one was the most expensive. This is, uh, mm, this is, uh, oh, there's a magnet. Uh, this is, a uh, uh, well, it's a cutter for mill. Uh, with a three uh, insertable uh, cutter. You can use uh, those triangle shaped uh, inserts in it, uh, like these, or like these, or like these. Uh, out of focus, size. <laughs> so you can use like these too. So, uh, um, well, <laughs> what I found out is that uh, these are all the same. Uh, this was one uh, uh, guy from um, Pakistan who is selling uh, things in Frankfurt uh, flea market. These are what the label says. These are not what the label states. Uh, there are two different uh, types. Uh, one which I can use with this, and uh, the others which I can use maybe for bracing, etc. Uh, these are not usable because they are straight. Uh, this one needs uh, the type of inserts which have... Oh, you cannot get them out. Anyway, this, uh, there is only three suitable, but you only need three. And then came a surprise. Uh, in these inserts... Uh, all of them are usable, but now I have got two pieces. And if you look really carefully, hopefully I can show it to you. Uh, if you look really carefully, uh, where does it uh, do the uh, autofocus? Autofocus? Okay, there. If the reflections do okay, you can see that one one corner is different. 
Then I looked out, uh, what is this? These are cubic boron nitride inserts. I have two of those. I wish I would have had a three. <laughs> uh, because then you can do hard milling with this one. Uh, other than that, this is of course used. The price, uh, well, it's a SECO. S -A CO and uh, it's a flow through cool coolant thing if you want to build a really <laughs> nice thing on your mill you can you can put coolant uh, into this hole and there are three small holes around here where it uh, where the coolant comes out um, well uh, maybe uh, <clears throat> And of course, then you have to have uh, some uh, sealants and everything. Here you can actually see there is a sealant uh, uh, here, the black thing ring there. Uh, it shows, yeah. So, yeah, that was one of my findings today. And uh, then uh, these inserts as well. Uh, the inserts and, uh, and the milling head uh, all together 80 euros. So that was the most expensive thing item today. Then <clears throat> there is a thing I was um, I uh, fetched uh, the other day when we my wife was uh, visiting here. So I catched up uh, this uh, thing, which is uh, well. Everybody knows what this is. Uh, this is uh, this is artist color, Luca Studio, Preussis blau. <laughs> uh, so this is blue. It's for bluing, and uh, well, it was not too expensive, uh, seven euros. And uh, I'm assuming I'm going to make myself a smurf. Uh, more than once, uh, yeah, with this one, uh, probably a lifetime supply. So, uh, what more? Uh, well, that that was all uh, what I found out today. And uh, the thing, oh, I didn't say what I paid paid for this one. <laughs> uh, it's actually a quality instrument. It's in uh, quite good shape, and it's uh, really robust. And if you pay five euros from an instrument like this, uh, well, uh, it could be in a very, very uh, more, uh, not in a condition like this. It could be all the rusted. Yes, it has some pitting on the side, but uh, the measuring surfaces are clean. Uh, it was covered with uh, grease which was actually a good thing, because now it's uh, not rusted. So, I made a bargain with this one. And maybe the bearings, uh, I don't know. Uh, they might be, or not be. I'm going to talk now about the equipment I'm using uh, to shot these videos. <laughs> shot. Yeah, the videos become really short after this. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the camera you are looking uh, through now, uh, I will show you the one. Uh, it's uh, not the one I'm usually using because, uh, well, I'm uh, going to present uh, the devices uh, I'm normally using. So, uh, this one is the normal uh, device. There is, uh, it's a Canon uh, power shot uh, um, 3GX. Okay, and uh, there is nothing special in it. Uh, one thing that I did is that uh, this is the lens cover. Actually, it's a, a filter which I have uh, put there so you can wipe it with your with your shirt, if it becomes dirty, uh, the lens you cannot change. You have to uh, keep it uh, clean. So this protects protects my lens. 
So uh, in the future when I'm in my shop uh, it doesn't matter if uh, some oil goes to there I just wipe it away. Okay now let's see. Now I'm filming the camera which you are looking through now. <laughs> uh, trying to get a good uh, picture about that. That's, that's a very cheap cheap one and you can probably see yes there is some the lens is not really good because it's uh, reflecting the light. Okay I'll turn this off for a moment. So yeah Okay, so that's the one I'm usually using. It's very good quality of picture. It has a very good optic optics and uh, well, the picture quality is superior. Okay. Another thing which is not so very apparent because however bad uh, this camera is uh, for its picture, its sound quality is somewhat good. But still, uh, I'm using a microphone. This one is uh, Rode, and uh, yes, there is this thing. It's not correct, currently connected on. So let's see what is the difference when I really do connect it on. Let's take it off. I have a pedestal for it too. So let's start singing. Uh, here is the voice recorder. It's a Tascam uh, DR40. Oh, nice name. So I'll put it on. Starting. Now it's started. Uh, seems like I'm uh, having a very good mode. And now, from this point on, I'll use the voice from this device. Um, you probably can hear the key difference. It's very different, it's very much better and I can control it uh, way much better than I uh, can do with the... Oh. <laughs> I didn't press the record! Now! <laughs> Now we are hearing uh, the the actual voice system. Well, this is not the first time I forget to push the record button and then hmm, I need to do everything twice. Okay. Uh, yes, hopefully you now hear the voice I already told. Uh, it's uh, way better, uh, etc. Okay, now let's put this back where it belongs to. Yes, uh, now the voice is going to uh, become a little bit uh, worse because I'm getting distance to this mi microphone but I can still balance it uh, much more better. And now the pedestal for that uh, better camera. This one is uh, made from metal. It's aluminium. It's very stiff and uh, I would say it's uh, really usable if you compare to that uh, plastic uh, thing. The, the locks are taper locks which are you just screw them and uh, they are really really steady after that. If you look one of uh, these things for your videos so you better check out that uh, the feet are good. Uh, stiff and uh, this part in this case it has a locking mechanism which uh, is here button you press it in order to get your camera out from it. It could be uh, uh, you leave it loose and then you drop your camera. Uh, however this model this model has this uh, additional security. It won't allow your camera to get off until you press, press that button. So <clears throat> now 
I'm uh, going uh, to record the introduction for this video. Uh, well, uh, uh, you are going to see it uh, here. <laughs> I will uh, now... Uh, uh, let me put uh, the, the scanner a little bit better so you can see how I do this. Okay, hopefully it's uh, a little bit better. The first thing I usually do, I this is uh, swiveling around like this. You, I balance it. There is a uh, bubble there which you can put in the center. And then I actually use the lines on the floor to align this one. So it's pointing to my face. Uh, my ugly face. So now I have it ready. And then I just take my camera, the distance is about right, about uh, a little bit uh, more than uh, one meter. And then I put the camera here, and as you can see, it doesn't come out anymore until I push the button, then it comes up. This is a very nice security feature. Then I just lock it there. And you can still turn it. Oh, you can't. <laughs> uh, if you lose a knob, you can uh, turn it around. But I want to get it uh, straight. Okay. And then this uh, camera has a nice feature. You can uh, uh, you can uh, <coughs> uh, see your what you are filming. Okay, and now uh, I zoom it appropriately. I know from the tiles from in the floor which is the <laughs> proper proper way to zoom it. Uh, well, it's a very good indication you you can see. And furthermore, it focuses quite well on those tiles. And now I'm uh, here. What I'm currently doing, I'm taking the autofocus uh, away. Uh, I don't like the autofocus, so it's manual. There is a scale here which tells that it's uh, about two meters. Okay, <laughs> it's more than less than two, but yeah, that seems to be, be working well. And now I will start the introduction. Enjoy. Okay, first thing first. Uh, oh, I'm too big there. Yeah. Let's put it a little bit farther away. And zoom. Zoom was too bad. Okay, now. Uh, it's still probably sharp. Huh. Uh, this is a little bit. I have to put it higher, maybe. Yes, perfect. And now the sound system. There you go. Okay. Hello. This episode of uh, Finno Ugric Machining is dedicated uh, to my uh, catch from the uh, uh, flea market today. Um, and then I'm going to uh, repair, uh, no, clean up and condition one micrometer. And then uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some, uh, some, uh, oh, what happened? The lights went off. It was not filming. <laughs> it should be filming. You know, you have to press the record button every time. Now. Hello. Hello. Ah, uh, which hand was it? Hello. In this episode of Finno-Ugric Machining, we are going to talk about uh, 
my cats from the Filia market. Uh, we are going uh, to clean up and condition a micrometer. Uh, then uh, mm, we are going to talk about uh, bearing ball tolerances. <clears throat> I got a few of them. So, and finally, we are going to talk about, uh, uh, and uh, I will show you uh, in there is a camera there. There, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how I do these videos. This, I think, is seldomly seen um, in uh, this type of videos. Okay, so let's go on uh, with my. Uh, uh, Flea market findings first. Now I usually have a little bit of pay, uh, uh, pause here. And I think how to end this up. And I record uh, the, uh, the end of uh, thing at the same time. So that was it. Um, so uh, not too much of Shaolin stuff, some yes, uh, especially the uh, 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 the milling too. Other than that, uh, yeah, uh, not so Shaolin. <laughs> okay, uh, see you next time. Bye. And that's it. Now I have the introduction, the introduction, and I also do have, uh, uh, I don't have material yet for the actual uh, things I'm going to show you. It will be a separate video uh, and I will not show how I make these. Uh, you probably can use your imagination. So, um, that was how I make these videos. So the last thing to do is the stop recording. <laughs> you have to remember to start and stop and uh, you have to remember. Uh, one thing about these compact cameras is that everything happens in one button. So Therefore, they are excellent. So now I'm going to push a button here. Bye! Now, the next step is to uh, download uh, the audio material uh, from the recorder to your laptop. It's done with uh, a cable, pretty normal USB cable. You connect it on the side of your machine. Uh, let me see, somewhere there. You put it there. Uh, let's see now. There you go. And then you turn this device on. Now it's on, and then you just plug this on the side here. So, and now it's asking whether I want to power power my device or use uh, uh, the uh, uh, storage. I want to use this storage. Oh yeah, Windows react, uh, reacts uh, quite well. There is your data files. Uh, hopefully you can see them. Are quite a lot of them. Control A. Select all. Oh, that's better. And then I have here uh, Sunday activities, Saturday activities audio. I just move them to here. There you go. Uh, well, this takes some time. I will cut off uh, and uh, uh, when I come back uh, I will be editing the audio.
This is uh, uh, the record, the uh, voice manipulation uh, for one uh, one uh, voice file. Uh, let's see uh, how I do it. First of all, I'm using a program called Audacity. It's uh, completely free, and you can do most of the operations you need to do with it uh, with your audio. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, this audio is already processed uh, with this uh, program. I will show you some bits, uh, export some bits which contain uh, the original sound so you can compare. Uh, so, first things first, uh, let's open here. I have already configured this in a way that it uh, is using Audacity program. Um, now, um, the first thing is to uh, see that uh, what I can see here is that we have some spikes here, quite heavy ones. And uh, I need to get uh, rid of this as a very first task. Uh, so let's see how this is done. So I just zoom into one. There is the spike. And uh, I need to put it off, and it's uh, like uh, amplify, and uh, well, let's say uh, minus nine decibels. That should be all, yeah. And then the next one, that's not bad, but uh, that's. And now, I, what I do one more time, I mix this into a mono. Uh, because uh, this is a mono microphone, so therefore, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what we do next. Now we have this track uh, from uh, the external microphone. The nice thing about this, uh, this um, Tascam is that it also records an other, uh, which is uh, the internal microphones. And uh, this... Uh, the camera here. And as you can see, it doesn't come out. Yeah. So now I need uh, to combine these two in a way that sounds good. Uh, well, it's uh, easier than you might believe. You just, uh, uh, well, I'm using earplugs here, so you don't hear the sound now, because I need, no, I don't need to hear it. Uh, I can play it like here. Now, <laughs> now we are hearing uh, the, the actual voices. As you can see well, here, it changes, and from I have found out uh, that the minus 17 yes, decibels is very good here. here. The voice I already told uh, it's uh, way better. Uh, okay. It's and okay. now, now let's, put this back. let's stop this. And now we combine these with these settings. So this becomes very much uh, fainter. It's just uh, to give some room to the sound. And now tracks mix. Mix and uh, render. And this will combine these two tracks into a stereo. Uh, of course, we need to normalize this first. So, uh, there is a normalize. Th what this means, it brings the level up uh, to a suitable, so that all my videos uh, have an equal uh, loudness. So now, if we listen, it's... Uh, And uh, where was the silence then? Okay, okay. This was the so-called silence. You can already hear how much uh, noise we have there. Okay, 
I'll take this piece. So I copy it. Then I create a new file. Noise reduction. And uh, the first thing you need to do is to get a noise profile. This actually analyzes your selection here. And uh, then I apply this kind of... Uh, uh, please remove this kind of noise from my recording. Noise reduction. Do it. Uh, uh, this is quite a long audio track, so it uh, takes some time. processed uh, audio. But uh, because we had uh, this um, change, we need to extract the audio also from the original. We need to use some of the original audio as well. So, and now the first part is uh, processed, so I usually delete them. And since we had this uh, uh, on the other folder, where is this with noise here? Let's put that away on, on the correct place. There you go. So, uh, this uh, is how I process uh, the audio. Well, you need to uh, get uh, the uh, video as well into your laptop. So this camera uh, has a very nice uh, uh, thing on the side. Uh, well, it's not nice when you try to open it with one hand. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But it stays open once you get it open. And then again we have this uh, USB, pl USB plug. Ah, I wonder when they do some near field communication with this. And the next thing is just to turn the camera on. Uh, there. It will connect to my PC right away. And then again. And here are the videos for today. Quite many of them. And this will take some time. Well, uh, <coughs> I will show you how to edit uh, the uh, introduction, <laughs> so you can see uh, how it's done. It's uh, quite easy. Uh, well, of course I have done uh, some prepares. I have uh, the video that is running in the background, the introduction is separate video, etc. So it involves some uh, some green screen techniques and uh, it involves uh, a bit of uh, uh, video editing. Nothing much actually, it's uh, quite simple and easy to do. So, uh, the first thing to do is to uh, import some of uh, these uh, videos. We are doing now the uh, the intro for this video. So it's probably in this one. Hopefully. Let's see if it is there. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, Okay, next, please. Let's remove it from there. Let's remove it from there. And then it might be the next one. 
This is really horrible sometimes. Okay, now it uh, looks like uh, the one. So the first thing is to uh, cut a suitable piece out of it. Um, let's see. Oh, the sound is uh, strange. Okay, let's see where to start. Okay, uh, strange looks here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, of course you have to put it here on the timeline and then uh, search the suitable point here. Okay, now I try to find out a suitable point where to start. This is good. <laughs> okay, uh, well, uh, I have a video overlay which is exactly 10 seconds long. So what I do now is that I freeze this frame for 10 seconds and uh, the, the first part here you can see I just remove it and this becomes uh, like 10 seconds you can quite easily here just put 10 seconds zero zero there you are um, well this is the introduction starting and then we see where to stop it. This, I think, is seldom only seen um, in uh, this type of video. Okay. okay. So, let's go on uh, with my uh, uh, clear market findings first. There is a good place. A little bit back, maybe. Ah. Maybe there. Okay. So then we just uh, put a marker there and throw away the rest of it. And there's your intro. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, I wish it would be that simple. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, you really need to save this somehow. And this is uh, save project and then you uh, go to here this one video and because this is intro I usually name them in numeric order it's easier to handle later on so it's zero zero intro and save <coughs> there you are Okay, uh, this is the raw material uh, for the introduction. So, uh, what I usually do at this <laughs> this time, I just export it. Uh, and uh, that's it. It's a raw material for my intro. So I export, create video, and then choose the correct folder. This is always bugging me. Uh, into the same folder. And then it was zero zero intro export. Shouldn't take too long because this is a very short. No, it takes long. Hmm, amazingly long time. Well, <coughs> uh, Ding dong. 
close and uh, now we are ready so what I have done now is a very short video uh, uh, which is usable with uh, the introduction the overlay video there it has a still uh, 10 seconds uh, in the front and then uh, I'm starting to talk uh, after 10 seconds and now uh, is there a close No. Okay. New project. Hmm. Control N. Why does it want to... Okay. So then we use this one... Uh, uh, Okay, let's close the program and then start it again. Uh, I have uh, this Filmora is not uh, very professional. You cannot close your project. It's uh, they probably have tried to make it uh, really easy to use. Okay, this one we don't use. We use the one we just created, and it's that one. Okay, that's now our video. But what we need here now is, uh, for the first I have here, uh, header, and finno ugric machining header, that one, and then we need uh, the audio for that one. Okay, so now I combine these three some, in some way. So, first the video itself, hmm? then the uh, overlay video, and this one I need to do a um, so-called green screen. I make parts of this invisible, so now I search at some point we have uh, hence green screen. So everything that has this green color will be transparent. Okay, so and now we need the voice. It was somewhere around 10 seconds where, where I talk, start to talk. Let's see, put this a little bit some around here, I believe. Let's see. <laughs> Sounds horrible. Uh, let's take a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. This voice synchronization is not very... <laughs> this is... Uh, I always laugh when I hear this. Uh... Now it's uh, in sync. Um, <coughs> uh, and what I can do for this I can now uh, silence it. We don't need this audio anymore. So here we are. Now, let's go to the start and play it. You all probably already know this. Well, there it is. Now, uh, I will now continue, go on with editing this and, uh, well, uh, well, in this video I'm saying bye quite many times. Uh, I think at least three times. So, bye. <music>
that was it. Uh, so, uh, not too much of Shaolin stuff. Some, yes, uh, especially the, uh, 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 the milling tool. Other than that, uh, yeah, uh, not so Shaolin. <laughs> okay, uh, see you next time. Bye!